Caitlin's father passed away two years ago, but that wasn't the end of the story. Caitlin had his head removed and defleshed and dried, and now his skull is just as important a part of her life as her dad once was. You can do the same with someone you love. Call 1-800-MY-SKULL today to find out why we're ahead of the competition for your skull defleshing and display needs. That's 1-800-MY-SKULL. Can I keep my parents' skull on the mantelpiece is one of our most popular questions of all time. But I was always like, we've answered it before. We don't need a whole new video. But it's come to my attention that that video was eight years ago when I was still recording on the webcam on my MacBook and not filling in my eyebrows. And my answer was about 30 seconds long. So yes, we can do better. Some people asking this question may be looking for a spooky, macabre paperweight, so goth. But I think most folks are looking for a tender keepsake of the person they lost. After all, keeping a skull is just leveled up cremated remains. Cremated remains. Ground up bones. Skull. Not ground up bones. And historically, human skulls have been used across a wide range of cultures as memento mori, reminders of our mortality. Being able to have your morning coffee with your mom's skull sort of bridges that gap between death acceptance and immortality. As always though, what we run up against in the Western world especially is the legality of keeping mom's skull. Here's the question, is mom's dead body a thing? An object like a car or a couch you can just own? Or is she still a person with rights? This has been a centuries long philosophical and legal debate. As it stands, legally, nobody owns a dead body. Not you, not your family, not the laboratory that your dad donated his body to for scientific research, not even the cemetery where he's buried. Corpses are called quasi-property. Quasi meaning sort of or almost property. So a corpse is an object, it's a thing, but it's not really property and no one can own it. But that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want to a corpse either. Most US states have what's called abuse of corpse laws, which are kind of exactly how they sound. These are laws put into place to keep the dead protected and stop weirdos and criminals from doing uh, things to the bodies, <clears throat> like the thing that rhymes with geckophilia, or from stealing bodies or body parts to sell them for financial gain. We've covered quite a few scandals, like the one at UCLA where that guy was stealing organs and body parts and selling them to the highest bidder. That's what we call abusing a corpse. Now, that's what I call abuse of a corpse. That's not a good joke. The legal definition of abuse of a corpse is going to vary from state to state, and those definitions can be frustratingly vague. Things like, abuse of a corpse is treating a dead body or remains of any person in a way that would outrage normal family sensibilities. Now, you may be saying, okay, but keeping my mom's skull wouldn't outrage my family. That's just like your opinion, man, so give me mom's skull already. But this is going to be your first huge obstacle in getting mom's skull. Finding a funeral home willing to separate mom's skull from her body and give the head back to you in, I don't know, a Yeti cooler, and not be terrified about breaking abuse of corpse laws. Listen, my funeral home is known for being one of the most chill vibes, whatever the family wants, funeral homes in the entire country. But I still, one, don't even know how to remove a head. I mean, I get it logistically and structurally, but we don't just have hacksaws lying around the funeral home. And two, removing heads is the kind of stuff unethical body snatching morticians do. Not really trying to pick up that reputation. And three, I don't want me or my funeral director to be brought up on charges of corpse abuse. Even though I want you all to achieve your dearest post-mortem wishes, there's just not a lot of pros for a funeral home willing to sign on to do this for a family. Even if a funeral home did say, I do not fear the government or their unjust laws, I will pop mom's head off for you, family. Okay, who's gonna get all that pesky flesh off her skull? 
Again, abuse of corpse laws are like, do not pass go. When I asked our resident corpse legal expert and friend of the series, Tanya Marsh, if there is any way to get and keep mom or dad's skull, she said, quote, it isn't legal in any state in the United States to reduce a human head to a skull. Not to mention, even if through some wacky twist of events, like you know the Dermestid Beetle skull cleaning guy at the local museum and can get your dad's skull squeaky clean, not putting it in a cemetery and just keeping it at home would leave you guilty of a misdemeanor in most states. Of course, the laws are always changing, although maybe not always in our favor. In April of 2020, Colorado passed a house bill that changed the penalty for abuse of a corpse from a class two misdemeanor to a class six felony, which is great to stop unethical body brokers, but bad for your skull dreams. Okay, but what if you just want like any skull? Doesn't specifically have to be dad's skull. Buying, selling, and owning human remains is not technically illegal under federal law, unless the remains are found on federal or tribal land. But it's also very much in a gray area. You may have tried shopping online for skulls and noticed that the sellers put the responsibility on the buyer, making them liable for any fines or litigation. And a lot of sellers in the UK won't even ship to the US because our laws are so darn vague. Of course, human bones obviously still make their way into shops and markets and private collections all the time. But that doesn't mean they were acquired in the most ethical or legal way. Studies show that that skull or femur you got your eyes on was likely harvested from an individual in China or India who couldn't afford a burial or cremation. Skull model, by the way, not a Chinese political prisoner. Nope, nope, nobody nope. Long story short, the bone sellers can say their bones are ethically sourced and like totally legal, but I can also change my Twitter bio to say I won the national taco eating championship eight times, even though I've only won it four times. Whether it's your dad's skull or that cool tibia you've been eyeing on buycooltibias.net, for now, it's generally best to leave the bones alone. But what about skin? No, I'm not talking about making a kicky new vest from dad's hide. Though, there was that human leather place that we mentioned in a video a couple years ago. Still not sure what's going on with them. I'm talking about the viral concept of preserving a person's tattooed skin after they die. You may be asking, how can keeping my dad's skull be illegal while keeping my dad's enormous back tattoo of a dragon pirate ship is, yeah, fine. The truth is, we're still waiting to see how this one shakes out. It's probably not 100% free and clear and legal. But right now, the process of post-mortem tattoo preservation is being offered as a service, rather than the skin being property that's being sold back to family members. And maybe it stays in the realm of legal? At least the most prominent tattoo preservation company claims that it is legal. Save My Ink Forever is a company in Ohio run by the father and son in Balmer slash funeral director team of Michael and Kyle Sherwood. To get them the tattooed skin to preserve, first you need to find a funeral home in your area willing to do the removal. Again, possibly running into the same issue of your local funeral director saying, not for me, thanks. If a funeral home does agree, they will get a recovery kit from Save My Ink Forever with paperwork, an instructional video, which I'd like to see. I would like to see it. And materials used in recovering the skin. Kyle Sherwood calls it a very simple subdermal procedure that involves cutting a border around the tattoo, keeping the blade at a 45 degree angle, and placing the recovered skin in a container with a dry preservative to be shipped to Save My Ink Forever. Sherwood emphasizes that Save My Ink Forever doesn't cost funeral homes a dime. And it's a way for funeral homes to make up for revenue loss because people just aren't buying expensive metal caskets like they used to. Why aren't people buying expensive metal caskets like they used to? Apparently, the process of preserving the skin and framing it under UV protective glass takes about three months and then it's shipped back to you. Fun fact, Kyle's grandfather, a trade embalmer, was known as Mean Gene, the embalming machine, and embalmed Chef Boyardee. Yes, that Chef Boyardee. So that's quirky and fun. 
Now, jokes aside, I wish no ill will to the Sherwoods. They're obviously providing a service that people want. Dad had some sick ink, after all, and tattooing is an art. I'm not sure that I'm gonna be the first to sign up as a preferred funeral home provider, but if it gets people involved in making choices about their loved ones' corpses, you know I'm all for it. The point of this whole video is that the ownership of human remains is one big foggy gray area, which in some ways is good news. It's not a forever solid no on the skulls or the tattoos. It's just an evolving situation. Hello. Did you enjoy that video? Interested in answers to even more morbid questions? Well, I recommend Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs and Other Questions About Dead Bodies by me, Caitlin Doty. You may have been interested in reading Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs for some time now, but thought this book is just too expensive and too hard. Well, now you can read this Goodreads Choice award-winning book for less money, and it's floppy, because that's what paperbacks are. It's a pandemic. I think it's time you treat yourself. As for book tour, I'm coming to your town to hug you and touch you. No, I'm not doing that. They're not going to let me do that. But I can do an online book tour, which means anyone in the world can come. Five events, five totally different topics. If you want to support the amazing independent bookstores we're partnering with, order the book directly from one of them, and your copy will come signed by me with this stamp we had made of my face because you like my face on things, and this fabulous laptop or bumper sticker by the book's artist Diane Ruse. All the links you'll need can be found below. Thanks to me for sponsoring this video. Support yourself, ladies. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Thanks for the career advice, Dad. At the end of the day, my passion is to raise free-range succulents. It's always been my dream. What do you think? I get it. You think that I should do something more practical with my life, like make $8 turmeric adaptogenic mushroom lattes for tech bros, right? <sighs> it's hard to hear, but I always appreciate you being honest with me, Dad. I have a surprise for you, Dad. Are you ready? It's one of my succulents. Do you love it? I worked so hard on it. It's a really good succulent. Everybody says so.